What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. And that right there is exactly why they call them a largemouth bass. They have huge mouths. Now listen, we're about to get into bass fishing, I promise. And we caught some big ones, much bigger than this one. But first, y'all see those two deer right there? I'm a big time deer hunter and have deer hunted the Midwest my whole life. But this year I missed the rut because the Idaho trip and the Mexico trip. Therefore, I'm trying to find somewhere to go in Alabama or Mississippi where y'all have a late season, you know, mid-January to early February rut. And I want to go there somewhere, but I don't know anybody. And here's what I have that I'm willing to trade. I'm willing to trade a week here fishing with me and Kelly and Robert and Dear Me for a week hunting somewhere there for me, Kelly, and the boys. Pretty simple. You come here for a week, I go there for a week. We don't need mega giants like that, that would be nice, but those are two of the biggest deer I've ever killed. We just want to go somewhere that's fun, that has deer to where we have a chance. And for that, I will bring you here and put you on a trip of a lifetime, I promise. Now, let's go catch some largemouth bass. But first I gotta start you out and tell you that at the beginning of the day, it was disgusting, raining, blowing, couldn't film very well. Luke caught, I think, the first big bass. Jake caught a couple. Brad caught a couple. Big one. Oh. Got him, son. It's the biggest bass I've ever caught. All of a sudden, it started to stop. Sun started to come out. Y'all watch this. Tight. Get it tight. Set the hook. Get it tight. Set the hook. Set the hook. Right there. There you go. The big one. Oh, yeah. See you, Jake. This is a six pounder right here. Get the net, Luke. I don't need him, Luke. I don't need him, Luke. I don't need him. Pick him up. Pick up, Luke. Pick up, Luke. There you Got go. Got him. Good job, Jake and Luke. Teamwork on the defender rod. <laughs> He's fat. Son, open that well, Brad. Put him in there, Jake. Whoa, about to jump out. That's my biggest bass, I think. Grandma, Let me see it. Grandma, did you see that bass? I, I saw it, those are nice fish. Luke netted him. That was really a good teamwork job. It won't get my boots. Give me knuckles. What was that? Let me see your face. Show us what you're doing. So you get them right under the lip. Come right up the nostril. Just like that? Mm -hmm. Now what? Cast him out. Pull him a little bit more. Right there. Oh, oh, big one. Keep that rod tip up. Luke, get the net. Luke, Luke, come with the net. Come on, Luke, come get him. Come get him, hurry. Go get him, Luke. Good job. Good job Luke. That's teamwork there, boss. Woo, that's another. That's bigger. Luke. Pick him up, get that hook out. How you like that old salty rod? That's great. And that just would be a lesson that I want to fish by myself and catch one of those. Hold him up. Son. Teamwork. I don't even think we need to put him in the well. We got bigger ones. It's teamwork. Makes You're, the dream work. Oh, look at that parasite on him. Come here and sit in, in the water right here. Good job. You what? 
Where are my lucky shorts? Those are, what did you catch in them before? Uh, oh, you got a big one, big one. I was just teasing. Luke, Grandma's going to get on that booty if you get in that water. I'm trying to catch up um, some minnows. Go real, Luke, real, 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 real. No, he's got one, Jake. Wait, he actually does? Yeah, keep your rod tip up. Keep it up, real, real. Whoa. Okay, this real. Son, he doesn't know how to just reel, okay? Another one on. Reel, Luke. Luke, we doubled up. Luke lost his. He we was going up. He was going for the winching technique. Hey, your other one got one on it too or something. It's way up in the bushes. Oh, my bank. Go get that one, Jake. You got one on that back rod. Way up in the bushes, that's not where it was. Old school just come through. He's still on there. I go, thought. Jake, reel, reel, reel. There you go. He's still on there. Where you going? Look at that. How much does a trip like this cost? 300 for a half a day, 500 for a full day. What's the Plus shiners cost? $20 a dozen. What's your average, about five, six dozen? Five, six dozen for a half, half a day trip and eight dozen for a full day trip. We brought 10 and we're already out. Mm. Look at them busting down on the surface, on the birds. Look at them. Dick in here. Look, you ready? Yeah. You're eating. How, how you ready? Give it here, give it here. Something big, Luke. Get him, Luke. Luke, something big. Get him, Luke. Stand right there in that corner. Real, real. Keep it real. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Rod up. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Hard. Keep reeling. Hard, Luke. I can't get him. Keep reeling, you quit. Hey, look. look what he did. He give up. I hooked up with the rod, got slack in my hand. Luke, that's your biggest one yet. Come back here and get him. Come here. We got to save him for a pitcher. Here, hold him. Hard. Bring him back here. No, no, no. Put him in the well. Come on. Put him in there. There's a whole lot of meanness in there. We only got about five more baits left, boys. Yeah, scoot up. Look right here, feeding frenzy. I got one on too, I think. Look here. I got one on here. You want the net, Gabriel? Oh yeah, big one. We got two big ones. what I'm talking about old son. We tore him up. Brad Gibson with G3 Outfitters is the man. He has his own boat exactly like mine and he charter fishes for bass. You can come with him any day of the week pretty much as long as you call and book it. He does live bait trips and artificial trips. Brad with G3 Outfitters. His Instagram will be right there. All right, let's clean this joker just like any other fish. Cut, we taught Kelly when we were in Mexico, if you try to cut against the scales like this, it's a lot harder. Come in and cut just like that. Turn your knife. You're wanting to angle your knife this way, not this way, this way. Get it in there just like so. Go all the way down and when you get near the tail, poke it through and come right out the back. Then you'll see I got, I like these Danko knives, especially their cheapest ones. And you guys, Danko's having some incredible sales this month. Check them out, use promo code BLUEGABE. They're like the cheapest knives you'll ever get and they last forever. I bend that knife a little bit and just run it right down the backbone. You hear that noise? That's how I know I'm right on the bones. 
Tell all your fans about that big old bass you dip netted. How big was it? Show them with your hands. Son, you did a good job on that. You ready to eat some fish and grits? Yeah. All right, let me get to it. It'll be done soon. Come up over the rib cage. Now you can cut through the rib cage and then cut the rib cage off the flay. We choose to go up and over it. I like to work from the front to the back. Cut through just like this. When you get to the end of the rib cage, angle your knife down. Make one nice clean cut. Voila, just like that. One beautiful bass flay. Now I know there's some controversy about cleaning and eating bass. Let me tell you about them people that don't like bass. That's your choice. For all the rest of us that like eating bass, just leave us alone. I always leave a little bit of meat to hold on to. And it's more of a push and pull. Just like so. Bass have very little blood and I did not bleed this fish. Cut those little pin bones out. And that's it. Flip it over and repeat for the other side. Mm -hmm. You know what I just realized? We forgot to tell y'all we were back from Mexico. As if you couldn't already tell. But we are and we've got even more amazing videos coming. I'm two in. I've got the lobster and the octopus video. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about Lake Okeechobee. That's like my home body of water, a place I grew up fishing. Some people don't like eating fish from there. A lot of people do. Kentucky, Indiana, tons of snowbirds, a lot of us locals. That fish is completely safe and really good to eat. And Brad, my buddy that we fish with, also does crappies, sakale, white perch. That's what's coming next. Like literally they're any day going to start pushing in the spawn and Brad's one of the best there are. You guys check him out. And you're definitely going to see me do some videos and I know Kelly and Robert will be out there with Brad doing more videos. Now for the fish. Here's the two flays, no bones. I'm going to cut it in about fish finger size. Put it in some of this olive oil and vinegar. You don't need to, it just adds a little bit of extra flavor. The meat looks really good. Dude, bass meat is so underrated. You know what? Bass meat reminds me of barracuda. Bass have a unique smell that's sort of like a powerful smell, but their meat tastes nothing like it. Just roll around in that marinade for a second. While it's sitting there, I'm gonna cut this side up. I probably should have got a little bit bigger of a bowl, <laughs> possibly. And leave a comment below if you're enjoying the Mexico videos because we've got some really good ones coming. All right, so everything's been marinating for about five minutes. Got my Lowry's garlic salt. Not gonna go overboard. About that much. And in this bag, I've got some can cooker seasoning. You'll have to go on their website to see it. I don't know exactly what's in it, I love it. I've actually had this bag for a while. This is like a little sample they sent me. And that's the last of it, so I'll definitely be calling and ordering some more. Ooh, that smells good. Smell Leave a comment below if you caught the part in the lobster video where El Capitan said, but can you smell it in Spanish? We were dying laughing. Like I wish I could show you hours of footage that we have from Mexico. We spent more time laughing and fellowshipping with each other than I could ever show on YouTube, ever. I'm gonna turn the heat up. I got my cast iron skillet with about a half an inch of peanut oil. Got some grits cooking. We're gonna steam some broccoli. Putting it throw down on the dinner table. Who's ready to fry some fish? They taught me this in Mexico. Put some onions in there and that'll add so much aroma. Even to the kitchen, when you walk in, you're like, woo, smells good. Got the grease at about 350, 360. I can't stand eating overcooked fish. Always have your grease at the right temperature. Put it in, get it cooked, and take it off. Get it off the heat onto a drying rack like this. It'd be so much better. That's about all I'm gonna put in for this first batch. 
I like to, as soon as I put it in there, move it around so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Living here in South Florida, Lake Okeechobee has been crazy controversial. You've got the guys, the captains with Clean Water Act, and this person blaming that person, and that person blaming this person. Listen, I'm going to tell you who's to blame. Every one of us humans that live in Florida, we all do the same thing. We all fertilize our yard. We all drive trucks that leak oil every now and then. Like, it's just everybody wants to blame U.S. Sugar and everybody wants to blame this. It's we need to just figure out the problem and how to fix it versus argue about everything. You guys, I gotta give a. I have had a serious loss in my family here in the kitchen. It's a very, very sad day, and I just realized it. My chef wizard things are broke. The spring's gone. What do I do now? Get on the internet and order some more? Just flip them over. You guys, if you're new to the channel, these things that I have in my hand, my mom got them at a garage sale. God, she's given them to me a long time ago. And they are so nice for cooking. You can flip fish and you don't have grease splattering all over the place. But they just broke. Kelly, you think you're going to... This what? This what I want for Christmas. I got you. The only thing I want for Christmas is me some new Chef Wizards. I've already gotten you two things already. Come here and smell that. See if you can... But, but, but can y'all smell that? Because this olive oil stuff I put it in smells so good. Look, look. He's played at my mom's house with Ari and Emma and Jake and the neighbor kid all day. You know your kid's tired when they start doing oddball things, yeah. picking their nose and act goofy. What up? How did you know to net that big old bass? Come over here. How did you know to do that? Because nobody told you to get the net. Because I think about doing it. Hey, Bye. Big shout out. Thank you. That boy's tired. Yeah, he is. Fish is almost done. When we were in Mexico, he added the onions to the grease, but he also added garlic, and that made the best aroma I've ever smelled. And I'm sure other people have done that too. That's just the first time I've ever seen it done. Look at that though. Lay it right on there. It'll drip dry, be way more crunchy, and so good. Look who just come out of the room though. You hungry, Jake? Let's eat. All right, Jake, you caught the biggest bass. You get to say grace. All right. Thank you, dear Lord, for this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Thank you for letting us have a wonderful day fishing, and thank you for this wonderful food, and thank you to God for everything you did. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What you got to say to that? Amen. 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 <laughs> Try that fish, Luke. And Jake and Miss Kelly. Huge shout out to Kelly for always helping me film and being such a great person. Mm, delicious. I'm pretty sure you would say it was delicious if it tasted like dirt. You just love that camera. Jake will give me more of an honest answer. Is it good? Yeah, but a little hot. A little hot? I don't know if I've ever had largemouth. Yeah, even it tastes like garlic That's bread. some of our best fresh water fish I've ever ate. Oh, real? Mm -hmm. All right. To visually see how good this fish is. White and flaky. Cooked so perfect. That is good meat. We forgot one person. Oh, yeah. Who is Well, hello. How are you? The barracuda was like the perfect comparison. Like fresh and salt water. Because bass have a bassy smell, but the meat's great. What about that dude? He was really good. I want to get him mounted. I just thought about that. I don't think I've introduced you to my new little friend. Watch this. One little piece of largemouth bass. And just like that, it was gone. Man, that's good. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. I agree with Luke though, it's a little hot. 
That fish, literally, that's just as good a fish as you can get. I understand some people don't eat them because they think that by keeping some, it'll hurt the bass population in the pond. Unless it's a teeny pond, you're dead wrong. You need to remove some to make room for others. Almost forgot, we're headed to Crystal River tomorrow to do a grouper spearfishing video. And then and then we're gonna be right back on track with the Mexico videos. But I'm gonna to try to break them up, maybe do one here, then one back in Mexico, one here so y'all don't get bored. But I promise you the best one's gonna be the very last one. Our vlog video where we're leaving Mexico headed home is probably my favorite out of the whole entire trip. But like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of what? We getting the heck out of shite.